Ricky Williams, David Thomas, and Emmanuel Acho now with us, six round pick in 2012. Philadelphia Eagles, soon to be star, pro bowler, all pro Super Bowl champ, right? Know it, that's the goal. Got all that down. That's the goal. What does this day mean? Um, you know, I think this day is big for a, lot of, for a lot of things, for a lot of reasons, and for a lot of people. Um, as, a, as a potential NFL player, as an aspiring NFL player, it's your job to now lay it all on the line. You know, whether or not you got the invite to the Senior Bowl or the invite to, to the NFL Combine, now is the time, now is the next best moment, now is the next opportunity to show the scouts why you belong, and whether it be head coaches, scouts, general managers, whoever's in attendance, to show them why you belong. Did you turn off some NFL teams because you're not very well spoken? And, you know, I, I don't want to question your intelligence, but maybe that <laughs> was drawing some red flags. See, that, that's an interesting thing. Honestly, you know, it's, it's funny you joke about it, but a lot of NFL scouts or NFL coaches, they're a little worrisome if somebody is too well spoken, if somebody is too intelligent because they start to wonder, well, this guy doesn't need football, you know, so how, how passionate is he about that? And so I heard that a lot throughout the whole process, but you got to be yourself. You know, whether, whether you're cocky, whether you're confident, or whether you're very shy and timid, you just got to be yourself and hope for the best. So how would you answer that question about your passion for the game? Um, you know, I love the game, obviously, and that's, that's why I think I've gotten to the level and had, had got to the level that I was at at that point in time. And I think my passion speaks for itself on, on my play and on, on the te television. So we're looking at some of the defensive backs right now. From what you've seen on the NFL level, what do you think – typically you're looking for in a cornerback with this day and age in the NFL, looking at a guy like Carrington Bindham. Yeah, I think the good thing about Carrington and, and even Adrian Phillips is that both those guys aren't afraid to tackle. And that's the big thing when I guess they came my, my junior year, I believe was their freshman year, and finally we had cornerbacks that could tackle. You know, we always had cornerbacks that could cover, but it's hard to find a guy that'll lay their hat in there. And so when we got Carrington and when we got Adrian Phillips and then even Quandre Diggs who showed up a year later, we were finally able to play some different coverages that we weren't able to play before that. So when you're talking about at the NFL level, not only do you have to be able to cover, but unless you are a lockdown, solely exclusive cover corner, you better be able to lay your hat in there so that you know your defensive coordinator has a freedom to call cover two where you can come up and you can force the issue as a cornerback. So how are these drills working out? We've seen a lot of huddles between the coaches and scouts running these drills and the players that are involved. What's happening? Yeah, so um, when you get to this drill period, there will be a, an individual coach that's kind of been selected, selected amongst the peer coaches as, as a coach that's going to run the drills, whether that be the coach that really wants to see how the athletes perform. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they choose that coach. In this per particular situation, it looks as if Aaron Glenn, um, former All-Pro himself, is now a, now a coach for the Jets, and he's running the drills. So he will put the cornerbacks through a series of drills that he wants to see them perform. At the Combine, the coaches aren't as hands-on. You don't necessarily have the say-so, but here at Pro Day, he can put them through exactly what he wants them to do. So if he wants them to do two 360s and then sprint 40 yards, he can do that. Or if he just wants to see them run straight ahead, it's all up to the coach's discretion. How typically are they adjusted to doing these drills? You can prepare for about 50 or 75 percent, and I think in, in my situation, my year, that's what Keenan Robinson and I were ready for. You know, we prepared for about 50 or 75 percent, but again, the coach can make you do whatever. And in this particular situation, that's what we're seeing here. So do you remember your pro day and who ran the drills and what drills he had you do? My pro day, I remember defensive coordinator at the time for the Bengals, who's now the current head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Zimmer. Zimmer, yeah. I remember he was there and he was in attendance. He, he kind of was the second guy in command. Um, obviously, him being a defensive coordinator at the time, the pressure was on. Uh, I just remember I was coming off an injury, tore my quad at the combine, and this was the first time I was going to be physically active uh, to that degree. So I, I remember being very stressed out, but at the same time, I was there with Keenan, the guy I'd played side by side with for three years. And so just try to cheer each other on. And that's the thing, like more or less, you're just out there doing what you've done since you were a kid. There just happened to be eyeballs on you. Contrasting the combine versus pro day, since you were able to do both, um, how much does being on campus with people you know in the bubble where you've put hours of work in, what, what kind of difference does that make for you? A lot more relaxing. The, the other good thing about the, the combine is, is spread out over a various amount of days. You know, spread out around three or four days. Pro day, it's all one day. And so the combine, you're thinking about it, you're stressing out over bench on Monday, then you're stressing out over the 40 on Tuesday, stressing out over weigh-in on Sunday night. Whereas pro day, you don't really necessarily have time to think. You're out there, you're doing it all. 
your, your college coaches, the guys that recruited you when you were 17 are now here cheering you on when you're 21, 22, about to achieve the dream that they wrote about in your recruiting letter four and five years ago? So we don't often get to talk NFL on this, on this show or on this network. So I want to ask you, what was the biggest adjustment that you had to make going from college to the NFL? Surprisingly enough, I would say stress level. I think when you're playing at a university like Texas, you know, in, in my time, we played the Alabamas, we played the Oklahomas, and so we played the teams and the players that you're playing at the next level. So it's not necessarily a talent level thing, and, and I necessarily, I, I saw that firsthand at the Senior Bowl when I was just playing against a bunch of guys I, I played against the last game in college. And so it's not talent level as much as it is stress level. And in, in college, you can't get cut. In college, you can't get traded. In college, you really can't get released. Well, in the NFL, all three of those things have happened to me within my first two years. And the sense I get is the way that the combine and pro day are set up, it's to try to mimic the stress level you're going to experience pretty much on a daily basis when you're in the NFL. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of guys and, and a lot of, to the naked eye, it appears that they're just testing physical abilities. They're, they're just testing your, your skill level. But more than that, they're testing your heart. They're testing your stress levels. I mean, people don't realize how tiring these drills are themselves. It's not just about how fast, how quick a guy is, but is he in shape? Is he gonna run all the way through the line? Is he gonna run all the way back? Is he gonna do it with a smile and with a, with a happy image on his face? Yeah. So Emmanuel, while we got you here, we're looking at some of the DBs, get you outside of that linebacker mentality just a little bit. Would you look at a guy like Carrington Bindham? Specifically, what gives him the best shot at the NFL? And where do you think the question marks will be? For Carrington specifically, um, his biggest assets are one, that he's not afraid to hit, and secondly, that he's fast. I think today he was clocked anywhere between 4-3 and 4-4. I think 4-3-7 was yep. the number I heard. And so he, he's a fast guy, and speed kills, and speed is where this game is going at all levels. And so he, he's fast. I think the, the downside to Carrington is his size. I think he was a, a 177 a day, and, and that's probably even heavy for him. So for Carrington, the only negative, the only knock on him would be his size. He's, he's shown he can catch the ball. He's taken interceptions all the way to the house. He's shown he can get run after catch. He just has to prove that he can maintain his size and physique. Before we let you go, Jackson Jeffco, can he play DE on the NFL level? Can he play linebacker on the NFL level? I think the good thing about Jackson, he can do both. Uh, and I think he's proven that. At the combine, he tested amongst the best with all the linebackers, running a 4-6-3, jumping a 36-inch vertical. and so. I know he can do both. Not only that, I played him in basketball coming out of high school. And so I know that the guy's a freak athlete. But again, he has a size and he has a stature to play defensive end in a 4-3 system. So we'll see. Um, I think he just needs to try to attack wherever the money's best for him and wherever the career longevity is best as well. Fellas, we're getting paid to do this and we just got shown up by the man that's stepping on set for free. <laughs> Emmanuel Acho, future bright in yeah. so many ways. Emmanuel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.